Welcome and thank you for joining me yet again. Uh, Saturday again, weekend, that time already, hot and spicy. So I hope you're in good health and uh, life is in good order for you. I hope you've had a good week and uh, about to have a good weekend. What are we having? Right, well, uh, this is all Mrs H is doing. Thank you, Mrs H. It's, um, well, I'm going to call it a chorizo and bacon um, stir fry with added fresh chilies, hot chilli sauce, garlic, peas, noodles, cashew nuts, um, carrots, there's all sorts, mushrooms, there's all sorts in there. Um, hopefully that looks nice to you. Um, this is just a chipata garlic bread. And she also bought me two bottles from the co-op Glamorgan Brewing Company. Uh, this is the Welsh Pale Ale, 4.3%, made in Llantrisnant. Trisant, sorry, Llantrisnant. And uh, same brewery, Cwrw Gorlas, Gor, Goslas, 4.3%. Um, that's an amber bitter. So, I think we'll go with the bitter first. Yeah, we'll go with that, nice and cold. You get hold of it. So here we go. Looking forward to this. This means it's a weekend, isn't it? So how this meal came about, uh, Mrs H was making, she does it for herself using corn, you know, like a vegetarian version, let that settle a minute. And um, with hoisin sauce, and oh, it's got hoisin sauce and everything as well. And uh, I got, oh, that smells nice, and I t tasted it, it's lovely. So I thought, uh, she said, well, do you want me to do you one for Saturday? I said, yeah, and I'll get the fresh chilies and the chorizo I've added. So um, let's give it a go, shall we? Here we go. Lovely. Oof. <laughs> I was going to say, do you know what sauce I've added? Chorizo. Ugh, chorizo. Come on, wake up, man. <laughs> it is sad that it's a long week. The Apollo. Bit of Apollo. And there was some... Uh, what else? Is it? Oh, Carolina Reaper. And fresh chili. Mmm, that's delicious. Well done, Mrs. H. You can cook more often. <laughs> Good cook. Cheers. Now we're talking. We're in first gear now, ready to go. <laughs> mm. Show you something else. Meryl, very kind chap from the United States, sent me many things, sauces, um, spicy packs, noodles, all sorts. If you're watching, Metal, thank you. He sent me three bags of these. Proper. Old Trapper, hot and spicy beef jerky. I'm having the, I'm sort of, I've been munching away, and it's, pr you know, um, the beef jerky we can buy here is thinner, it's smaller. Um, and it's not as good as that. No chance. That's proper pieces of beef, and and there's there's a bit of a kick to it. But um, I'm gonna add some some powder, some spice. Um, 
I got some lovely powders downstairs I use. So we're gonna add some of that uh, as he does and then shake it in and then oh it's lovely with a beer. Chorizo. The bacon I put in is a thing called Lardons, little square diced bacon you can buy it smoked. So with the Spanish chorizo, chorizo fried up with the chili gives everything a lovely colour as well. Mm. Oh, there's a nice tingle in the mouth. Mm. What are you having? I notice when I do, um, well, under this video sometimes, but a lot of times for Sunday in the shave, People say what they're having in them. God, they sound good the way everything's listed, the ingredients, everything. That's a nice beer. Bitter, sorry. Oh, it's going down a treat. It's been a uh, funny old weather. We've had, the, got to talk about the weather, we've had, the, <laughs> was it the last week? Wind and rain, oh and it thrashed it down. Really stormy and windy and, look at this, and the next day, you think it was a summer's day? The sun was out, it was warm and you couldn't believe the day before because the rivers were high. Um, some parts of London were flooded, I think. Concrete city, is he? There's no effort to go, I suppose, but we got rivers and hills here, and we, well, you got the Thames in London, but. That's something I'd like to do. Um, I was speaking to a, a chap last week. Been to London. Um, he attended someone's retirement, and they had a do on on a boat. So having drinks and a meal, going along the Thames. What a fantastic thing to do! Never thought of that. Talking of that, I had um, about 11 years ago, we had a severe winter, um, minus 13, 14. I know to some people, you know, Canada or whatever, you think that's yeah, nothing a summer, that. <laughs> but it was, you know, minus 13, it was cold for us. And I was delivering. The snow had been, you know, it's been for weeks. And it was so cold, it had packed down, it sort of turned to ice, thick ice. So I'm driving carefully. And um, I came to a junction, country road now, single lane. And I came down this sort of slight hill and the uh, four-wheel drive coming towards me. Now I braked, but my wheels sort of locked and it was just sliding slowly. This chap's brakes, you can see his wheels had stopped. But we both came towards each other, slow motion, bang! The front of my van was buckled because he had a bull bar, you know, these on the front. I'm not sure if they're illegal now, but... Uh, Anyway, um, and he was concerned, he was an elderly man, he's passed away now. Um, worried about his license. Oh, they'll take my license off me. Knock for knock, knock for knock. 
50-50. But I said, well, I've got to report it. So I said, here's my details. I said, I have to have yours. And he was a bit hesitant. I said, well, we'll have to get the police here. Anyway, give me them. So I went back to work. You have to report it, fill a form out. And nobody was hurt and this and the other. We both drove off. The vehicles were drivable. No other people involved. Anyway, that was that. Heard nothing more. So Royal Mail fixed my van and presumably he fixed his own. A year later, the phone went here. I said, hello. Hello, it's um, Royal Mail solicitors in Manchester. Talk to you about the accident you had. I said, accident? What accident? And he said the chap's name. I said, that was over a year ago. She said, I know, but he's refused. He said it was your fault. You went into him. I said, I certainly did not. We went into each other. So, well, he won't have it. He, he's putting the blame on you. Would you go to court? I said, I certainly will. So that was... <laughs> So I was given leave for a day and uh, Royal Mail sent a, a barrister from London. Why a barrister? I don't know, but a barrister from London. And um, that's a, well not scary, but that's a interesting place to visit a court, let's say. And it was in uh, Wrexham. Um, and all you could hear was uh, Royal Mail versus this chap's name. To courtroom five, please. So my, well, I called him my barrister, was he? He said to me, is this statement true? I said, it's as true as I'm standing here on my life. Right, he said. So going to court, I put my hand on the Bible and you have to swear, you know, the truth, nothing but the truth. And his solicitor lays into me then. Oh, you've, you know that round well, don't you? You know the route, you know it. You, Maybe you're going a bit fast when you come in. I said, no, we had minus 13, thick ice, blah, blah. So, um, I said, we both seen each other. Nobody was speeding. And we just locked and we just came into each other. I said, I was on a slight decline because he tried to say I was going down the hill. I said, I said it wasn't a hill, a decline. So anyway, that was that. He said, no further questions. So I sit down by the barrister. This chap gets up then to go into the... Wouldn't swear on the Bible. No. Big chapel man, you see. So anyway, the judge said something to him. And, uh, he had to say something. I can't, I can't remember how they did it, but he did it another way. So the barrister gets up then. He said, well, uh, we'll call him Mr. Jones for, for the... Well, Mr. Jones, he said, it seems you've changed your statement three times. He said, the first one was you went into each other. He said, the second one is you pulled over and he went into you. And the third statement says that you'd stopped and he went into you. Now, which is the truth, Mr. Jones? <laughs> <laughs> and he was blubbering and blabbering and didn't know what to do. And anyway, and we had to leave the courtroom. The judge said, come back in 20 minutes, I'll make my decision. And he awarded it 50-50, which is knock for knock equal, you know, which Royal Mail offered him. Um, but I think he had to pay court costs. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you that, this barrister said um, before we went in, this is in the bag, he said, in the bag. I've got to be back in London, he said, by five this afternoon, because I'm having lunch on the Thames on a yacht or something. <laughs> I'd love to know how much an hour he was on. Thousands, probably. Nice chap.
I'm sorry to drag you through that. This is gorgeous. Mm. Mmm, so many flavours. The heat, nice garlic taste there. It's nice because, funny enough, I put fresh chilies in, so I'm getting heat, what I know I get from a fresh chilli. And then, there's this sort of binding heat which adds to it, which is from the sauces. And the flat, but the combination, wow, it works. Mm. Try it fresh chilies and a hot sauce you like. <sighs> Lovely. Lovely. Mm. The garlic bread. Mm. Tomorrow, um. I went to the butchers. Went to the butchers yesterday, and um, look, here's a lovely display in the window, you know. So while he's serving someone, um, I'm looking outside. Oh, lovely, beautiful pork chops, nice with a bone on and the rind on. So uh, the other chap came out. So uh, we had. A, I went in and he was there, and he had a lovely well, a hind quarter of beef, which is like a side of beef. Oh, and then he said to him, give me a tea, but not. <laughs> God, it looked lovely. Huge, you know, fillet steak, sirloin, rump steak. Anyway, two pork chops, um, smoky bacon. And he said, I did a joke with him. He, he said, uh, lean, as I like them. I said, smoke your bacon, please. <laughs> no, I said, I want a bit of fat in it. Too lean. You gotta have a bit of fat marbling because it cooks better and tastes beautiful. So, bacon, and what else did I have? Uh, oh, I've got some sausage rolls with black pudding in. Um, so, it's sausage, meat, and black pudding mixed for work. Took them into work. And Gareth, if you're watching, yes, this has got sauce, well, not from a jar, but from a bottle, all right? So no phoning me next week, talking rubbish. He's a colleague of, of mine from another office. <laughs> this is lovely, wow. Building up, so that's lovely. The more you eat, mm. now that's what it gets. Mm. So tomorrow's going to be pork chop, rind on all that crispy crackling, um, potatoes which I'll steam, and then I'm going to mash them. Um, Butter, salt, pepper, and a bit of cream if I've got. Um, yeah, lovely buttery, creamy mash. Cauliflower, broccoli, and lash and of gravy. Beautiful. I got a few ales, more ales, which I got in the week. Um, lager, uh, cider. So there's plenty of choice of, um, wow. That's unusual. That's hit me on the throat. No one else. Well, there's a tingle in the mouth, but the heat's on my ear. That's unusual. <laughs> nice though. Mm. 
yeah, so there's a choice of what to drink to wash the meal down. Um, other than that, God, this is lovely. I'm going to do another meal you can make for the freezer. I miss it, would be gorgeous in the winter. Tasty. So many flavours in there. Mmm. Anyway, leave you to it. Going on. I know. I know you've got life to live. Wow. That was delicious. Finish that now off camera. With this second bottle. That was a lovely drink. Good sign that when the head's still still available down the glass. Oh, delicious. So once again, thanks for your company. Sorry if I've waffled on. Um but whatever you oh, it's making my nose run now. That's lovely. Nice heat building up, lovely. Is it lovely? Yeah, it's lovely. So thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. If you're working, many thanks for your service, uh, wherever you are in the world. Take care of yourselves. If you follow me on the other Paul H Films, I'll see you in the morning for the shave. Um, if not, I'll see you in the next video. Many thanks and take care of yourselves.